fire resistant housing is more important than ever and today we're going to look at a potential solution. The CEO of RIC and I drove out to the desert a couple states away from California to do a little bit of non-scientific testing but they said if this video gets 10,000 likes we can do a full-size fire test of an actual house with the fire department so make sure to drop a like if you'd like to see that. See the time lapse of the fire at the end of the video. I'm here in sunny California where fires are currently ravaging the landscape and they are desperately in need of a non-combustible solution. Housing that won't light up like a tinder box and expose surrounding homes to even more of a problem. Believe it or not, this home behind me was 3D printed. They did a great job finishing it with stucco, making it look just like a traditional home blending in with the neighborhood. I'm here with the CEO of RIC Technology Z and we're going to take a look at this awesome project in hopes that California can rebuild in a way that will be safer in the future. Uh -huh. It's good to see you, Z. Good to see you, man. So, how, when did you start this project? Well, this was started around March last year. I think the printing days were about a little bit over two and a half, a little bit over to three weeks. And then you can see this is like a very, very common neighborhood in the metropolitan area of Los Angeles actually someone's actual backyard and uh, we were able to get the machine in go drive on the pad it took about four moves supposedly but because we had to get out we did this wall last there should be a video of that in a bit and then it printed this wall and then it ran out pretty straightforward this is a tight area where did you place the printer during this project so it was printed on the pad and then printed around it so I could I probably have some photos of that as well. And then so you, it print because the robotic system, it was printed centralized and then printed on the sides. And then only this bit was printed from this actual area here. And then the mixer pump system was on this corner with a small like bag loading silo system. So yeah, pretty good for this kind of small environment. You guys know we love seeing the printed layers, but in this case, the client wanted something that looked more traditional. So you can't really tell it was 3D printed, and that's kind of a benefit for a lot of people. Can we take a look inside? Yes, sure. Wonderful. Yes, it's almost finished being decorated. So yeah, actually this is really fun. Never seen it finished. So this is where the second and third move the robot was. Uh, this was the second one. It was like placed like here and then printed all over the long side here. The third one, I, believe, I remember it was like here and printed the front. I actually have a time lapse of that bit. And then actually going in here though, I think this is the first bedroom. That's where the first move was. Uh, the whole chassis system of the mountain here and then printed all around, yeah. I don't know, it's crazy to see it finish. Really fun. I think the majority of people prefer not to have the layers exposed, so it's good to see that it can complete a home that looks indistinguishable from traditional construction. Yes, and then it's interesting that people think uh, printing this and then finishing it needs special GC, but this is actually this GC's first project. Uh, the GC is a build tech. Uh, this whole house and the idea is it's his brainchild with the owner. Their idea is, so this is actually a granny flat, it's for the mother-in-law. Their idea is like, cause she's Asian and then she actually prefer concrete to wood. And then also that combines with LA, the whole wildfire from a couple of years before, they really wanted a non-combustible building. I think uh, fire resistant could be the right term. Uh, and then uh, the GC Aaron, he's actually a wildfire mitigation expert uh, certified by the fire department to do this whole project and then so a lot of design details i mean 3d printing is actually just a part of his whole design it's from his protective design uh, approach and you got uh, this roof system is a pure metal roof system and then you got concrete sheeting you got concrete tiles and then he blocked off a lot of the small areas where fumes or like flames embers can go inside so you really took the time and really designed the house to be as fire resistant, as fireproof, well, not fireproof, as non-combustible as possible. And then because uh, this area right now is not that bad, 
but if it's in like a super bad wildfire area, it, it will have shutters from, from outside of the windows in case that happens when like a hundred mile winds blow against it and then break the windows and burn the inside. Yeah. This video is actually sponsored by BuildTech. So make sure to check out their website at the link in the description. They specialize in home building, especially fire, disaster, recovery, and repair. And they've built hundreds of homes. So it's an awesome general contractor if you're looking in the Los Angeles area. Uh, we actually did a super skinny printed wall. It's a six inch wall in total. And then outside of the wall, they did a metal stud and then insulation over there. And what was the structural, uh, did they pour in concrete 100% or are there structural columns? Uh, these, this is poured 100%, but because it's such a skinny part and then they actually didn't pour too much. I remember it was one truck pour. And then so I remember it was uh, one and a quarter and one and a quarter. And then I believe it was three inch in the middle. And then there is uh, number four rebars throughout the house, every feet. And then, yeah, and then it's actually crazy to get the 3D printed nozzle to print around it. Uh, we have to do a tilt on every turn, and then especially when we have walls, uh, the, uh, our coder hated it, not a very good job. How long was the rail on the printer you used for this? So we only took three rails, so it's uh, nine meters, 27 feet in total. Probably have like, uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, but it's modular, so like some of the moves, it only had the chassis mounted and just turned around it. For the long straight walls, we had the rails extended. Was your home affected by the fires? No, no. Because LA is such a long area, this is a lot east, and then it would be pretty catastrophic if that fire burns through here, but which is already pretty catastrophic in its own right now. Has the city been appreciating concrete homes and are they interested in using the technology to rebuild? Yeah, I believe Aaron has had a lot of people reaching out and then especially because he did this as a preventive measure in the first place. And then so people, it's good that people can see, oh, we have a new method to do this. Like, like this is ADU, 1200 square feet. I think the concrete wall system compared to frame build is more 20K, 20K ish more. But for people's houses that are worth like a mil and two mil and they can't get insurance, that's actually not a lot of money. That's actually what they pay for insurance every year. And then, so this technology can really be utilized to bring more value instead of, oh, let's just simply drive the cost down. And then people elsewhere, Europe, Asia, obviously Africa has been a lot have been using concrete to do housing. And then obviously that's, especially in Asia, because we have high rises, all of that, that, you have to have that. But in the States, the new technology, the automated part can really bring that viable for everybody to at least explore the possibility to use concrete and then use non-combustible material, if it's like CFU or other, or stone or brick, to build houses in a non-combustible way. One of the most common comments I get is, why do you never show the finished 3D printed house? So it's wonderful that people will get to see one that's actually completed and pretty much ready for move-in. Yeah, and then this is actually a very crazy area to do it. It means uh, Los Angeles. Yeah. I was told it could never be done permitting wise, and then, but this is obviously done. And then the city inspectors were out here every day. The city official came out every two days, and then they were here at every step. And then uh, this house already has the moving permit, so it's pretty amazing to see how far our industry has become, even in the worst place to do this, which is California, which is also the place that I needed the most. Yeah, especially right now. Yes. So permitting, it was made a little bit easier because it's an ADU? Uh, because, I mean, LA is, uh, this would be an Aaron topic, obviously, but from what I know, LA's uh, permitting procedures are notoriously long, mm -hmm. but because of the housing crisis, ADUs have a higher priority. So I think the ADU part only made it faster through the building department for, because it's the ADU part, but there was certainly a learning curve. It took Erin a long time to educate and then to bring the city plan checkers up to date of what this is, but after explaining it's, at the end of the day, it's still, still reinforced concrete, 
and then they can do calculations the same way. The structure engineer was able to design. As, actually, it's, I, I think it's over engineer, but over engineer is also good. Over engineer a housing structure that the plant checkers are super comfortable with, and then be able to build in the way that it did. And then Glad is finished. And Glad owner has a actually has a better that's a performance house than his own for his mother-in-law, which is actually great. Uh, especially for the people that has a uh, space and they want to do ADUs, I wanted to build new. Uh, obviously tearing their house down is not a great option, but having a part of their house being built out of non-combustible material, that's a good way to start. And uh, I think it's a trend or it's a method that people started to realize. It's like after the big LA uh, earthquake, that's why LA has such strong seismic requirements. People see, people see the devastations. And I think now is better time than ever to really, I mean, it is a disaster and uh, it is like unsinkable of the people who lost their homes. But I mean, from this point on, people can really realize how changing the way we build just a little bit. Because we have, I already know about the 30 little pig stories. And it's kind of still amazing that we have to get to this point to people lose so much homes and then so much of their property to get to a point, okay, we maybe want to look into building houses just a little bit different. The structural design for the earthquakes compared to some place you would build without earthquakes? Well, I think this just needed a lot more rebar. And then so like there's a rebar every, I believe every nine inch. And then on the corners, there are like, if you look at it, it's like a double rebar. And then like every foot, there's a vertical rebar. And then uh, the rebar from the slab come out about 33 inch. So like, this is like a bunker. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like I, someone can drive a truck into this. Hopefully they don't. I guess it'd be hard to get a car back here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really a wonderful project, and even though I do love to see the printed layers, I, it's good to understand that people can get traditional style construction from the new construction technology. Yeah, and then this really gives people less concern about, oh, it's still a printer, you got the layers. And even though I print the layers all the time, like, I understand why people wouldn't like them. And then like, I, I've stayed at the Icon uh, 3D Airbnb, and after a day, you, you do like kind of like the layers, it's not there anymore, but you still kind of notice it. And then obviously it's 3D printing right now. No one is 100% perfect. You'll see the imperfection here and there. So just like showing people, I mean, you can always stucco over it. Like it will look exactly the same, yeah. Here's an explanation from Aaron, the GC behind the project who's also certified by the fire department for building fire safe structures. Let's take a look at the fire triangle. Any fire happens, require three conditions, oxygen, heat, and fuel. Which condition is easy to control? Heat is extremely difficult to manage, especially during wildfires. The oxygen is impossible to control. The only condition we can control is fuel. That's why Biotech Construction Group design and build non-combustible house to protect people's life and property with 3D printing technology and SAF system. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you'd like to learn more, Z and I sat down for about an hour to do a podcast episode, and then I did a Zoom call with Aaron, the GC behind the project. So make sure to check that out in the link in the description.